Hi lovely people, welcome back to my channel. Today, finally, I am going to do a walkthrough of my Christmas present to myself, The Weaver's Oracle by Carolyn Hillier. This deck I've wanted from the very first second I saw it. I saw it first when I just deemed that all indie decks were not for me, that it was too expensive. And then I saved and I saved and I began to realise how important decks were to me. And this was my Christmas present to myself. The plan was to pull a weaver's card on the first of every month and to work with that weaver through the months to get to know the deck, but to give myself time to really, to really sit with a weaver and a card one at a time over the space of a month. I did toy with the idea of doing one a week and I still might pull a card a week anyway, as, as well as the one that sits there for the whole month. I don't know yet, but what's the date today? 14th, 15th? Who knows, who knows? It's Sunday, I know that. Um, and I still haven't got round to it. I haven't got round to doing this video with a, a flip through. I haven't got round to pulling any cards or shuffling it. 2021, that's all I'm gonna say. Homeschooling, let's just leave it at that. So I thought, well, okay, let's pull a card for new moon energy. The new moon was a few days ago now, so I even missed that time frame. But if at a push, we'll just say it's new moon energy. Um, so now the plan is to pull one of these every new moon, which my wonderful friend Lisa over at Keridin's Cauldron also does, which I've just realised watching one of her videos, which I'll link below. So I could say I've been inspired by Lisa to do it, or I could say I'm being super spiritual and following the moon. None of those things are true, even though Lisa does inspire me on repeat. But for this, none of that is true. The plain, simple fact of it is I've been too overwhelmed with life. I miss New Year. I miss New Moon. So we're running to catch up. So this is my running to catch up. I'm going to do a flip through of the deck and then I'm going to pull my first weaver, which is going to run roughly around new moon to new moon. So here is the box. It's a beautiful quality box. It's a two part box, which opens up like so. So you've got a thank you cover letter. It's 52 cards. The deck was created from paintings and writings that span 30 years. All the mythic stories and spirit images around which the oracle has been formed are rooted in high moors, cold rains and the un untamed hill hills where she has lived and grown her work. They are profoundly inspired by the wild songs of sacred land, the shadowy edges of ancestral memory and a reverence for deeper mythologies that exist close to the earth. The oracle draws on the wisdom inherent in women's journeys as it crosses intuitive landscapes and follows the trails of cunning grandmothers, ice mothers, feral daughters and women who weave magic out of weather. To those who are familiar with Caroline's work, the oracle will be richly textured, retrospective and inspiring compilation, as well as a wild alchemy that catches the essence of her craft as a weaver of images, words and women's archetypal mysteries. To those who are newly arrived to her hearth, the Weaver's Oracle is a powerful doorway into ancient landscapes and the soul-shaping journeys that can be found there. Wow. Well, that is why I really, really wanted this deck. Now, it comes in a black pouch and there is a guidebook in the bo bottom of the box as you can see and the guidebook for each card there are no pictures but there's so so much information to delve into within this book so that is for study with each card I pull now the one thing that I found when I got this deck is 
there's a few can you see the threads there was loads of these rough threads on the edge and if you do have this deck could you tell me if that's normal and also one of the cards that one there can you see it's not quite trimmed the same as the others this is one kindle shaman weaver of earth look at that oh these are the backs by the way and the size of them so if i compare them to a large thoth you can see they're a slightly larger than a large thoth card card two mother of time Card three, the edge, a deacon of the lost drum. I just feel like I want to lose myself in these, the stories that these cards are going to tell. The crown of doorways, just so fantastic. The black coral fish mother. The jagged shamanica, number six, more. Number seven is Sand, Old Woman Walks Good. Eight is Lake, Song of the Moon Woman. Then we've got Clay, Grandmother Turtle. Crag, Grandmother Weaves the Wind. I just love that the fact there's so much crone energy in this deck it feels like magic before i've even started working with it so this is rock bone hill hag and ridge she cuts ice witch they are beautiful and then you've got this slightly different style with a different um a different layout on the card so you do have these two different layouts so this is salmon ancestor of the remembered home the titles of them are just so oh so evocative the titles deer dreamer of the wild woods and one of her tattoos 15 is heron ancestors of the marriage fire 16 snake dreamer of the bright hearth the cardstock is a beautiful map cardstock it really is lovely apart from these rough edges the furry edges horse ancestor of the distant shrines bear dreamer of the primordial stories look at these cards they are so fantastic Owl, ancestor of the cold earth home. Buzzard, dreamer of the longest flight. Weathered woman of the twisted hazel. Weathered woman of the brimming bowl. 23, cloud, weathered woman of the dragonfly wing. Weathered woman of the harvest kiss. 25, Storm, Weathered Woman of the Dark Drum. 26 is Mist, Weathered Woman of the Mazy Dance. I mean, this really does feel like it taps into female strength and energy and something that's real, which is lovely because in a body beautiful and youth obsessed culture, this is just lovely to see. Weathered Woman of the Diamond Blade. Wolf. Nomad. So you see this diversity in the braid. There's real looking women. There's the crone energy throughout. I just love it. I think these characters in these cards just pull you in before you've even begun to work with it. I mean, look at that image. I mean, I just want to sink into her story and embody some of that power. I want to see how it weaves with my own story. Shadow, look at her. 
with her pipe. Shaman Weaver of the Valleys, so slightly more youthful energy here. And she's runner. I mean, that cloth is gorgeous. Hopper, Shaman Weaver of the Rivers. I love these. I love these images of the women behind the cloth. Shaman Weaver of the Sky. Out of all the decks I've ever seen, this was the one deck that I knew that if it had ever gone out of print and I didn't have it in my collection, I would forever mourn not having it in my collection, which is why there was no question about which deck I was going to treat myself to for Christmas because <laughs> this deck is just, oh, I'm going to be so excited to work with it. So I wonder what you think of these images. I know my textile training kicks in as well when I see this cloth and the patterns and the colours and the way that the women kind of have soaked in the patterns into their beings. It kind of just strikes a chord with me. It, kind of echoes my own history of my life within textiles too but I wonder what somebody not with that history might read with these pictures it is beautiful though isn't it look at that image shaman weaver of caverns <gasps> With just that title, you could fall into that title for days. Shaman Weaver of Tundra. Oh, I love, I love it. Hope, the Bleeding Woman. Lament, the Illuminating Woman. Solitude, the Dissolving Woman. Oh my gosh, I mean that, that is just so powerful. Not only the image and the color palette, but the key word and the title, The Dissolving Woman. There was many a year recently where I felt like a dissolving woman. And silence, the hollowing woman. Wow. 52 cards of evocative imagery, incredible keywords, incredible titles just completely amazing I really really love this deck okay I am going to shuffle and then I am going to see what is going to be my first weaver for 2021 Copper, the Shaman Weaver of Rivers. Okay, let's see what the book has to say about her. If you turn to number 38 in the book for Copper, you can see it's set out with her yarn, her braid and her cloth. I've only just looked briefly at the book, so as I work with this, I'll do more videos about working with this oracle. But on initial first pull of a card, it would seem that her yarn covers the story where um, this figure and this cloth comes into play. Her braid picks out in bold print some key elements. So in this card, you can see the word heron and heron house and heron's coat. So the key imagery uh, and the key symbol in this card is Heron. And if you move to the back of the book, there is a page that covers all the key symbols and totems from the braid. So you can see Heron is here, number 15. The magical craft symbols and inspiration that we're given for the word heron is blue spirals, a crimson girdle and spin mother. And if we look in the card, 
we can see the herons in the cloth. I suppose this is a crimson girdle, is it? Heron symbols are here. The spin mother, she's got a spinning, uh, a spindle there. New spirals, I can't see. Anyway, the, those are the symbols that we're given. So if, if you wanted this to inspire craft work, I suppose it could, and it probably will, to be honest. And then the cloth is an overview. You can also go deeper by looking at the clans and the tribes that each card belongs to. Because you can see there's guardian clans, earth clans, blood clans, life clans, bone clan, loom clan, and death clan and then there are tribes as well so this card belongs to the loom clan she weaves the mystic coat of herons and it also belongs to the tribe of east weavers but it does say an east there her yarn is the ancient mystery tale. Her braid is the plaiting together of keywords written in bold type that describe and give more information about three symbols or totemic objects or characteristics of the weaver which are visible in the painting or tied into the tail. Oh, okay, so when it said blue spirals it might not necessarily be visible in the painting. It might be within the tail somewhere. There may be items carried or worn by the weaver that have some ritual importance, or they may represent the essence of who she is and what she does. Ah, oh, the blue spiral, of course, it's the river. Ah, oh, very slow on the uptake with that because she's the shaman weaver of rivers. All the braids are listed together at the end of the book, which is where I showed you the heron. And then the cloth section, you are invited to stand back from the small detail of the threads to have a broader view of the offering you have chose of your chosen weaver and how it might be relevant to your journey. In doing so, you can reach further out to its meaning and deeper into why it matters that you have arrived this place inside the weaving house. Wow. There is an awful lot to take in when working with this glorious deck. I am going to be really excited to sit with this card, to read the guidebook for, for this one, the copper, the shaman weaver of rivers, to possibly do some craft work if life allows, and to get a feel of how this glorious deck can be brought into my own life and hold meaning for me on my journey. Um, I hope you found that interesting. I know it's been a brief discovery through. It's because I'm new to it too. But I think if you're picking up this deck for first time, it's nice to see just the images first and how somebody picking this deck up for the first time might initially delve in so pulling a card looking at the images having a flick at the guidebook trying to get to grips with what those three sections mean discovering the keywords and the way the keywords and the, the totems for those um, details work and then stepping back and seeing the big picture about beginning to understand that there are different tribes and each tribe is broken down and um, and just basically knowing the direction that you need to start walking in to travel with this deck so it's a journey that I hope to bring you in more detail as I walk it and I hope you find that interesting okay guys thank you and I will see you next time bye